Hey coders, welcome back to Coding Coding with NJ, where you are currently watching X video in the series in which we are implementing an e-commerce website without any frameworks and libraries. The back end is being implemented in PHP and the front end is complete JavaScript. The front end and back end logic is completely kept separate and the communication between them is done through fetch APIs in RESTful style. In our previous tutorial, we implemented a session based shopping cart for our guest user and in this tutorial, we are going to implement a shopping cart, but for a logged user, a registered user, and that cart is going to be implemented through database tables. And since this cart is going to be implemented through database tables, so let's go and have a look at our tables before we start our coding shooting. So as you can see, we have already three users in our database who are registered. The username for them is triple A, triple B, and triple C. And the passwords are triple A, triple B, and triple C as well. So these are three registered users which we can use to log in and, and create a cart for them in our database tables. Now let's have a look at those tables and see how those tables implement our shopping cart. So we basically need two tables. One is called this cart, which is going to represent a user's cart. So when the user is logged in, a row is implemented over here. This card table basically contains just two columns. The first one is auto-generated ID, which is going to be unique and it's a primary key. And the second one is user ID. This is actually a foreign key to our user table over here. And whatever is the ID of that users over here, that ID is going to be placed over here. The actual items that are in the card are going to be placed in another table called card item. Now this table has four columns. First one is ID, which is unique for each row. The second is card ID, which is a foreign key to our card table. And this product ID is a foreign key to our product. So any product that has been placed by the user in the card, that product's ID is going to be placed over here. And this last one represents the number of quantity selected by the user for that particular item or product. The unique thing about this table is that this table doesn't have the ID column as its primary key. So let me show you its structure. So as you can see, the ID is not our primary key. However, it can't be null and it, it has to be unique. And it's auto-incremented as well. We actually have a composite primary key which consists of two columns, the cart ID and product ID. So collectively, these columns are going to represent a unique value. And that combination of uniqueness represents our primary key. The reason for making these two columns a primary key is going to be made clear once we have implemented the update card logic for the logged user. By the way, these two are also part of foreign keys as well. So we have a foreign key card ID, which is going to refer to our card table and the product ID is referencing to the ID column in the products table. So individually, they are foreign keys as well and collectively they make one primary key as well. So this is all there is to tables that we had to implement in our database in order to implement a database based shopping cart. Now let's go and define the logic. And when it comes to logic, since we already have implemented a session based shopping cart for our guest users, that means our front end logic is already implemented. We don't need to define any further front end logic except for few minor changes, just the addition of few lines of code. The only thing that we need to work on over here is those empty functions that we created in our logged user card file in our previous tutorial. So this is our, let me close this index.html. So this is our logged user card.php file that we created in our previous tutorial when we implemented the guest user card.php file. All we need to do over here is that we have to fill in those functions. So let's get to it. The only thing that we have to take into consideration while implementing these functions is that they return exactly the same data in exactly the same format to our front end as being sent by the session based shopping cart implementation. Otherwise, our front end might fail to properly display the data in the browser. Okay, so now let's start with this function get log user card. So this function returns the current status of the card back to the front end so that the front end can update the card and if there are any items in the card, it will display that circle above the card icon in the browser with the number representing the number of items in the card. But before we implement this function, I have noticed one minor mistake, which is this one, require include db.php. So we are saying in the current folder, we have a folder named include and in that folder, we have this database file. 
But if you remember, our these two files, guest user card and log user card, are within this include folder. So that means we have to remove this part. So within this current folder, we have a file named db.php. Include that file into this file. And now this file has a connection variable, which is now part of our this file. We simply have to pass that connection variable to our function. And since we are interested in that connection variable, so we are going to say global connection. So this way we are even though declaring this variable inside the function, but because of this keyword global, this function is not creating a local variable named connection. Rather, it's going to use the global variable connection, which is inside this db.php file. Now let's create an empty array. Let's give it a name card. Now the crux of this logic is going to be, step one is going to be, get the ID from the card table, where user ID equals log user ID. So that means we have to look in the card table and look for any row where the user ID is equal to the ID of the log user. Now, if you remember at the time of logging in, when the user is logged in, let's go to login.php file. So this is the method which is logging in the new user. And when this user is logged in successfully, we are creating two session variables which is a two dimensional array. So index name for the first dimension is log user and the second dimension is name. And for the second variable, again, the first index is log user and the second index is ID. And in this session variable, we are actually storing the user's ID so that we don't have to again and again go to our database and look for its ID. So we are going to utilize this session variable, this one, to get the ID of the user. So we can say, user id equals dollar sign underscore session log user and id from here we will get the user's id then we are going to use this user id to look for a row in the card table whose user id matches this id and that id will represent the card id so we will define a separate function which is going to perform this logic. So card ID is going to be defined in a function get card ID. And let's pass this user ID as a parameter to this function. So we have to define this function. Now we will be using this user ID in many other functions that we have defined over here. So we have to write this line at multiple places. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to place this logic in another helper function so that I don't have to write this longer sentence. So let's cut this line and get user ID. Now this function will return as the user ID that we store in this variable and then we pass this user ID to get card ID. So these two are helper functions. We have to define both of these. So let's go down and define those first. So we are simply returning this session variable. Okay, now let's define other helper function. It takes one parameter, user ID. Since we need to communicate with the database, so connection global variable so this way we have access to the connection variable in our function now let's create a local variable which is going to store the card id and initiate 
initially it's null let's create a statement mysql statement select id from card where user id equals the parameter that we have received in this function so we are saying return us the id for the row whose user id is equal to the one that has been passed as the parameter over here so if there is any such row in our card table that row's id is going to be returned and that id represents the unique card for this particular logged user now let's execute this statement If this part executes successfully, we will have some object in the result variable. Hence, we will enter in the body of this if block. Now, over here, we have to check if the number of rows that have been returned is it greater than zero or not. So, it can either be zero or one. So, if it's zero, that means no such row exists in the card table. In that case, we have to insert a new row in the card table whose user ID is going to be the one that we have received as a input parameter in the get card id because if we don't have any row in the card we cannot have subsequent rows in the card item table where we will actually place the items or product that the user puts in the card so if result num rows so if this is greater than zero the result will be true in that case let's update the card id variable by calling fetch a soft function on this result object and since we are only interested in the id and in fact we only have id in this associative array so we are performing these two steps in single line first convert the row that has been returned into an associative array and from there return the index whose name matches this id and store it in the cart id variable if that is not the case, that means the num row is actually zero. That means we don't have any row in the card whose ID matches the logged user's ID. So in that case, insert a new row in the card table matching this user ID. So statement equals insert into card user ID values is going to be dollar sign user ID. Again, result is execute the query. So if this statement executes successfully, then if the rows affected if this is greater than zero, that means uh, that means a row has been successfully created in the card table. So assign the ID of that newly created row to this card ID variable. And to get the ID of the newly created row is going to come from connection variable insert ID. So whatever new row has been inserted, if we are interested in getting the ID of that row, we have to use this insert ID property of this connection variable. And finally, we will have the ID of the newly inserted row in the cart ID table. Okay, now at the very end, simply return the cart ID. Okay, now both the helper functions are defined. Let's go back to our get log user cart function. Now, once this get cart ID function finishes its execution, this cart ID will actually contain either the ID of the ID of the cart which is associated with this particular user, or it will be null if no cart has been created for this particular user. So we are going to check if cart ID. That means if it's not null, in that case. Let's call another function and store the values that are going to be returned by that function into this cart variable. 
So cart is going to be get all cart items. And let's pass this cart ID. So this part will only execute if this cart ID is not null. Outside this if block, we are going to simply return whatever is the current status of the cart array back to our front end. And we have to over here make sure that the index should be the same, exactly same that our guest user cart is returning. Because based on those values, uh, we have already defined our front end. So if we are putting something different over here, let's suppose capital C, a cart with capital C, this will not match with the one based on which our cart, our, our front end logic is displaying the data in the browser. So we have to make sure we are returning exactly the same data and exactly in the same format to our front end that our get user card is returning. Let's return this array. Now this card can be an empty in, in which case it will be an empty array. Otherwise, this will contain all the card items which could have been returned from get all card items function. So now we have to define this get all card items function. Let's go down. The SQL statement that we have to use in order to get all the necessary fields that we have to send back to our front end. Now the SQL statement that we are going to execute over here is going to be the most complicated SQL statement that we are going to use in this whole project. So basically we have to use join statement to join three different tables together in order to get all the data that we have to send back to our front end. So before I write that statement over here, let's go to our workbench, MySQL workbench and try to construct a SQL statement that joins three different tables. Make sure that that statement is returning us the results. And once we are certain that that statement is executing properly, then we will paste that statement over here. So let's go to our workbench. Now, in order to verify that the statement that we are going to write is returning us the correct result, we need to have some data in our card table as well as card item table. So let's put some data so that we can verify the result. So we have three users with the id 1, 2 and 3. Let's use this first user with the id 1. So in our card, let's insert a new row with the user id 1. Apply. Okay, so now we have a row in our card table with the user id 1. Mm, let's put one more row with the user id 2. Finish. Now let's go to our card cart item sorry so the first row which belongs to the user with the id1 has the cart id1 as well and the second user with the user id2 has also has a row with the id2 so the cart id is going to be 2 so let's let's put some data in the cart items this is the user 1 with the cart id1 product let's put product 1 and let's make quantity 2. For the same user with the cart ID 1, so with the cart ID is 1, that means it's the same user. Product ID 5 and the quantity, let's make it 3. Now let's put some data for the second user whose cart ID is 2 and let's put the car product ID 5 as well. So this product is in both cards. The product with the ID 5 is in both users cards but the quantities are different and let's put something different. So cart ID is 2 and the other product that this user has in the cart is let's make it 7, car product ID 7 and the quantity let's make this 2. Apply. Okay. Now we can get the product ID from this cart item double and the quantity the user has selected from this quantity. But we also need this product's image and the stock that this product currently has. And we also need the price of this product's single unit. So that information is going to come from the product table. 
So we have to join these three tables, the cart item, product, and the stock is going to come from the inventory table. This one. So we have to join these three tables. So let's make a statement. Select product.id. So this P is going to be an alias for the product table. So from product table, we are going to get the ID. And from the same table, we are going to use the image column. Then from the cart item table, so CI is going to be the cart items uh, alias. From that one, we are interested in the quantity because the quantity selected by the user is in cart item table. Then from the inventory, we are interested in the stock. So the actual stock of the product. From the product table, let's get the price. So this price is for the single unit of that particular product. From product is, sorry, not is, just P. So this P becomes the alias for this product. Now we are going to use inner join and we are going to join this product table. Let's put this down on the second row from product P and let's move this row up. Inner join with the table cart item and let's give it alias CI because this is the alias that we have used over here. Now we have to define the condition for this inner join. So on product ID equals cart item dot product ID. We also define another condition for selecting the row where CI dot cart ID equals what data we have in the cart. Let's use this one, cart ID one. Let's ignore this inventory for the time being. So we are saying we are joining two tables for product and cart item. So we are saying join the rows in both the tables based on where where the ID in the product table matches the product underscore ID in the cart items table and where cart underscore id is equal to one so join those two rows and from that joint row return the id image quantity and price so this is one half of the statement let's execute this for the time being and we got an error unknown column ci dot quantity don't we have this column in the quantity cart item we have the spelling mistake it's q u a n not any okay now let's execute it okay so now we have been returned two rows a product with id 1 and product with id 5 let's check this in the cart item so the rows whose cart id is 1 that has two products one with the id 1 another with id 5 this is what we have got over here then these are the images and the quantity selected by the user and the price the only thing that is missing is the stock availability for this particular product with the ID 1 and 5. So now we have to use another inner join with the inventory table and from there we are going to get the stock. So let's put i.stock and at the very end add one more inner join with the inventory table and its alias is i on Let's define the condition where product ID is equal to I dot product ID. This is the column in this inventory table. So any row whose product ID column in the inventory table matches this ID column in the product table return those rows and in fact only return the stock. So now let's execute this one more time. So now we have got again two products ID 1 and 5 images quantity price and this price is for the single unit of this this particular product this is not the price for two units of this product or three units of this product but the stock availability is 56 for product 1 and 18 for product 5 now if we change the cart id from 1 to 2 will be returned the other two products in the other users cart so now we have been returned a product with the id 5 and id 7 the quantity for product 5 is 1 and for product 7 is 2. So these are their prices. This is the car that belongs to the other user.
So that means if we replace this value with a variable, then this statement, this whole statement is going to be a dynamic statement which is going to return all the products and all the fields which we need to get from these tables that we can send back to the front end. The only piece that we still have to modify over here is that this price should be the collective price for all the units for each of these products. Like for this second product, since the quantity is 2, so the value over here should be 240. We have to now work on this part. So what we are going to do is that for the price, we are going to multiply it with quantity. And the quantity is going to come from the cart item. So times ci dot quantity. So this is going to give us the price. As price is the alias. But now this can give us a decimal value with more than two decimal digits. So we have to truncate it to two decimal places. So what we are going to do is that we are going to pass this whole thing as a first parameter to truncate function which is part of my square. So control x truncate first parameter comma since we want two decimal places after the, the point so two. Now let's execute this statement one more time. So now you can see we are seeing the collective price for the number of units for each product. Let's change this back to 1. Execute. Now this is the collective price for all the units of each product. So now this is working. Let's copy this whole statement. And over here create a statement. Test. The only thing that we need to do is that we have to replace this cart ID with this variable. Now let's execute this. So if result equals connection query function and pass our statement to it. So if this executes successfully, then we have to check if we have been returned any number of rows. So if result rows that means if this is greater than zero we will get inside the body of this second if block the inner if block and since we might have been returned more than one row so we are going to use while loop let's pass one row at a time to this row now we can create an empty array and keep inserting all of these rows into that array and return that array back to our front end but if we do that, then even though that array contains all the data that is needed by the front end, but when it's received by the front end, it's not in the same format in which we want it to be for our front end to understand and display it in the browser. So now we have to convert the data that we received from this row into two-dimensional array and send that two-dimensional array back to our front end because that was the format that we put our data in when we are defining the guest user card. So first of all, Let's create a temporary variable id which is going to contain id from this row. Now create a two dimensional array, product array. The first dimension is the id and the, and the second dimension is going to be different. Let's make it first one image and give it the value from row image. P, test. The second one is going to be stock, test. Third one is going to be quantity, test. And the fourth one is going to be price. So now our product array is two dimensional array. The first dimension is going to be the ID for each of the products and the second dimension is going to be the rest of the information. Okay. Now at the end, we can return that product array. But this product array doesn't contain the total price. And our front-end logic, this product array to contain total price as well. So what we are going to do over here is that we are going to create another function update 
hotel log bar so we are calling another function update hotel log card and passing this product array and whatever is returned from this update hotel log card function that value or that array is going to be eventually returned since we don't have this function defined so we have to define this function now this function has received this product array which contains all the items which are currently in the user's cart so what we are going to do is that we are going to iterate through this array and we will keep on adding the prices together into a separate variable named total and then at the end we will add another index to our product array that will contain the total and then return that array so let's create a variable named total with the initial value is 0.0 let's iterate through this array is I'll make it item inside the body of this for each loop so it's total equals to total plus item price now the current total after the addition with the current price can have a decimal value greater than two decimal points so we have to again truncate it So total equals round total up to two decimal places. Okay, so that's the logic inside the for each loop. Now, now outside the for each loop, we have our total variable updated, which contains the total price for all the products. Now we are going to append this total to this product array. So product array. and give it the index total because this is what our front end expect and give it the value total variable then we have to return this product array copy i have used different function names paste Okay, so we have defined the logic for get log user cart, but while we were defining this logic, we have implemented most of the logic which is going to be utilized, which is getting all cart items which are currently in the user's cart, another helper function which returns us the user's ID and user's cart, as well as we have defined the function which calculates the total. We have manually put two products. for the user id1 and user id2 so let's try to log in with user id1 and see if we are able to see the circle with two in it over the top of the cart in our browser so to refresh let's open console so we have already got an error unexpected and it says internal error so there is something wrong with the php Okay. So the error that I have received is failed opening required db.php. So the thing is this. Now since this log user, now the thing is this this log user card.php file is going to be included. So it's being included over here. So so that means the path to this db file should also be with respect to this file card.php file. So that means our previous Path, which was include folder, was correct because this whole code is going to be inserted into this card.php file, and from this card.php file, the path to our database file, this DB file, is in the include folder. Starting from the current folder, go to include folder, and from there, we have a file named db.php. So we didn't need to make this change anyway. 
okay so now let's go and test it out okay so we haven't got any error now let's log in it's triple a because this user has the id one so even though we have got this user logged in successfully but we don't see any cart item that's because when we are logging in we haven't called the update cart function so let's go to our login.js file So this is user login function and let's go to the end of this function so actually this is the function we have to go to because when the login button is clicked this is the function that's that gets the response back so let's go to this function user login request which is this one user login request and let's go to the end of this function so over here we are saying if the data that has been returned if that object this object has a property named user that means the user has been successfully logged in so we have to add one more if data dot user ampersand then update card we are going to call this function update card refresh let's log out let's log in one more time Triple A, Triple A, submit, and you can see we have this circle over our cart icon with two in it because there are two products in the cart. Okay, so let's click there, and we can see this part is already sorted out. Now what we need to work on is that we have to define the logic, which actually inserts the item into the cart because currently these two items were manually put through the database table. Now we have to define the logic which adds a new item in the cart, updates the quantity and deletes the item from the cart as well. So these three pieces of logic that we have to work on, but we have already done most of the work. So let's go towards working on updating the cart item. So if I change the quantity from two to let's say three, now we got an error because now this request went to the logged user cart and there the function is empty which is supposed to handle updating the cart so let's go and work on that one add new product to the cart let's work on this one first then we will work on updating the logged user cart okay so as we have already figured out when we are defining the guest user cart that when this function executes it, it, it actually contains some data in the post super global variable and that data is the id of the product which is being added to the cart as well as its quantity so let's first extract those two values in local variables let's make it product id Now it is possible that the product that we are trying to add to the card is already in the card. So we have to take into account that possibility as well. So if the new product that is being added to the card is already in the card, then simply update the quantity and price. Otherwise, insert a new row in the card item table. So the way to do that is through SQL statement. Insert into card item. Cart ID, product ID, quantity, value. Since we are receiving these values from the user, so we can't rely on them. Therefore, we have to use prepared statement. So question mark. Then we have to take into consideration if this product already exists in the cart. So we have to use on duplicate update quantity equals the old quantity or the current quantity plus the new quantity that is being received from the user so question mark now this on duplicate this on duplicate update this part only works on the primary keys so if the primary key is duplicate then we can update the quantity but the thing is this, we were not applying this condition based on the ID. 
because the id is going to be unique for each row therefore we had to change the primary key for this cart item from id to the composite values the product id and the cart id we made these two columns as a primary key a composite primary key had we made one of these a primary key then that would not have served our purpose because there can be multiple rows in the cart in the cart item table with the same cart id so cart id cannot be unique and the primary key is supposed to be unique and likewise a product is unique for for each cart but different carts that means different users carts can have the same product so this product id cannot be unique either so we have to keep this possibility that both of them can be repeated in multiple rows but in order to make it a primary key we have to make it a composite primary key so there cannot be any two rows with the same cart id and same product id so that's why we had to make it a composite primary key because the collective combination of both two rows is going to be unique and since now these two are unique we can apply duplicate on this one so if there already is a row with the cart id 1 and the product id 1 that means the user to which this cart belongs to has already a product in the table and we are trying to insert new one so if that is the case then that means it's a duplicate row in that case just update its quantity i hope this is clear now since we will need the cart id so for the cart id call the function get cart id and since this requires user id as a parameter so let's call another function get user id this will return as the user id which is being passed as a parameter to get cart id function and this in turn will return as the cart id now let's prepare this prepare statement we need to define this connection is a global variable now bind the parameters with the prepared statement since all of them are of type integer so 1 2 3 4 four i's because there are four parameters the first one is cart id then product id which comes from over here is quantity which comes from this variable and the fourth one is also quantity so the quantity is quantity plus the new quantity which comes from this quantity variable copy paste now we are ready to execute this statement so prepare statement execute now let's close this prepared statement otherwise it will keep leaking the memory now let's create an array with the name cart and call a function get all cart items pass cart id as a parameter now this cart array contains all the items in the cart so we have to simply echo this Back to our front end. So just sign in code. Cart. Let's pass this cart array to it. And with this, we are done with the logic to add new item in the cart. Let's go and test it out in the browser. Okay. Let's add one more item. Hmm. We got an error. Okay, it says we are getting a bind param error on line 25 in log user card. So if this call to a member function on boot usually happens when the parameter names are not correct. So line 25. Okay, cart ID, product ID, is it? Yes. Cart ID. This seems to be fine. On duplicate. Okay. We are supposed to write on duplicate key. 
the keyword key was missing. Now let's try to add one more item. Just to be extra careful, let's refresh it. Even though that wouldn't have made any difference. Okay, so we've got three over here. That means uh, the product was added successfully. Let's check the content. So we have three over here. Okay, billion. Now let's update the card and delete the card. So by update, when we change the quantity over here, everything should get updated over here. And when we click on this delete button, the product should get deleted from the cart. So these two logics, let's go and work on them. Okay, update user cart. Let's first get global connection variable. Now, if you have watched the previous video, you know that this page is an array which contains two values, ID and quantity. So let's extract them into local variables first. In fact, let me go and copy this. Test and now just change the name over here from post to page. Now card ID. We need access to card ID. So get card ID which will require user ID. So get user ID. Now let's create a statement. Update card item. Set quantity equals question mark. Where card ID equals card ID. We don't need to put question mark over here because we have got this card ID from session variables. We haven't got this card ID from the user. So this value is safe to be put directly. And product ID equals this product ID. So question mark. Let's go and let's copy all of these and fit all of them. Test. Okay, this is fine. Prepared statement. We are passing this variable statement. Now we have. How many parameters? One is quantity, other is product ID. So both of them are integers, but just two, so two is. The first one is quantity. Okay. So the first one is quantity, so quantity, and the second one is product ID. Test. Okay. Then we are executing the statement, and we are closing the prepared statement. Then we are calling get all cart items. And we are sending it back to the front end. Okay, should work now. Let's go and test it out in the browser. Let's update the card from 2 to 1. And it got updated. Okay. Let's change this from 1 to 2 and see if our total updates is work. Good. Now the only thing left is delete items from the card. Over here again, let's get global connection variable. We need the ID of the product that needs to be deleted, which is going to come from delete array. Now, again, we need card ID. requires user ID as a parameter. And we are going to have almost the same logic as this one. So copy and paste everything. Okay. Paste it over here. Change the statement from update to Delete. So delete from card item where card ID equals the sign card underscore ID and product ID equals question mark because we are getting this product ID from the user. Prepare statement. So this product ID is integer, but we have just one question mark. So one I. This is product ID, same variable, okay, execute, close, 
been found the get al Qaeda al card items function and send the card to back to the user. Let's delete this one and it got deleted successfully. Now let's delete. Delete. We got redirected back to the front end or the the dashboard. Now the only thing that we need to do is that let's put some items in the cart first to show you what I mean. So this is one item in the cart. Now log out. Now even though we have logged out, but we can still see the one item from the previously logged user's cart. So we have to make sure that this gets erased as well because the user is no more logged in. So for that we have to go to login.js file and in our logout function we have to again call update card function. So where is login.js file? This one and we have to go to logout. User logout, okay. So if the logout is successful, then call update card function. This is going to update the card. And as you can see, we, we can't see the one over here. So just to be extra certain, let's log in one more time. Add an item to the card. This is out of stock. Add this one. Okay. Did I put two? The one item was already in the card when we previously logged in. Now let's log out and the two disappeared as well. Let's log in one more time. Triple A. Triple A. And you can see the two over here because this triple A has put two items in the card. They are still in the database table so therefore it's still there. Now even though our logic is complete and it will work fine but just to put extra safety we are going to our login.php file and when a logged user has logged in successfully at that time, we want to destroy the session variable named card. So even though it's not going to affect, our logic is already working fine. But just to be extra careful, we want to destroy that card session variable if it exists. So let's go to login.php. And over here, this is the post method. So this is where we are logging in. So before echoing back to the front end, let's unset sign underscore session named card. So this session variable contains the card which is associated with the guest user. So we are unsetting it. Okay, so that's it. This is all the logic. So now we have completed both session based card as well as database table based card. Session based card was for guest users and the database card is for registered users. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much.